just lifted me. Do you know I'm on my way to heaven because Jesus lifted me. We're singing glory, hallelujah. Well, now Jesus lifted me. Amen. Amen. Certainly we're thankful and grateful to Almighty God once again and that God has blessed us to assemble at this place. And I'm reminded of the words of David of, of old. David said, bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Certainly God has uh, benefited and blessed us in great and multi multiple ways this morning. And he have allowed us to arise from our beds of slumber and assemble once again uh, for this great and grand occasion uh, today. I'm so thankful uh, to Almighty God, first of all, for allowing me to see year number 61. This is my birthday today, so this is, this is a great birthday gift to me. I'm, I'm shocked and surprised, uh, but that's all right. We always try to stay ready for the Lord. Amen. So we're standing in the gap for those that uh, were not able uh, to make it, and certainly we can understand that things will come up. So we're happy and glad that God has given us this occasion. I want to thank uh, our very fine, uh, my very own minister here, Brother H. Clay Williams, uh, who is a great gospel preacher, and we're just proud of him and proud of the way that he uh, structured this lectureship, not only this year, but last year. We got off to a running start, and we're just thankful uh, that all of you are here, and uh, we just want to let you know that we highly appreciate you and we applaud you, and uh, we want to commend you highly uh, uh, for being here and uh, for the goodly number, although many have work schedules, but we, we've had good attendance, and uh, we know that it's just going to get, as my daddy used to say, gooder and gooder until the end, so we're thankful for that. Uh, at this time, we want to not delay uh, uh, the preliminaries, but we want to get right into our message uh, for the morning. Uh, we want to uh, invite your attention uh, to the book of Acts, the book of Acts chapter 1, uh, verses 9 through 11, and uh, we were assigned uh, the topic uh, during, uh, uh, before uh, the lectureship, and while it is still going on, we were assigned the subject, that same Jesus is coming back uh, that same way. He left. Uh, that same Jesus is coming back uh, that same way that he left. And I can see already in this topic, and I know I, I may not take all 30 minutes, but uh, that's going to be all right. I'm going to give you what I have, and it's the word of Lord. I have nothing new, uh, uh, nothing to bedazzle or bamfoozle or uh, excite anyone, because if the word don't excite you, then you can't get excited. Uh, but I, I love the word of God, and I love the Lord's church. Uh, these last 37 years, God has been good to me. Coming out of the Baptist church, and I was taught long time ago, as uh, long as your heart is right, then everything's all right. That's the biggest lie I've ever been told. You better make sure your heart is right with the Lord. Amen. You better make sure it's right with the Lord. Because this same Jesus uh, that uh, we'll talk about in the passage that went up from us, he's coming back again. Yes, Brother Graves said he's not coming to put his foot on the earth. We're going to have to meet the Lord in the air. Yes, and we're going to be called forth from the grave. Mm -hmm. So we need to make ourselves ready uh, for the Lord. But let us look our, at our scripture text uh, this morning. Acts chapter 1 and verse number 9. And the Bible says, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse number 10, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Verse number 11, uh, the Bible says, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? That same Jesus, which is taking up from you 
into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. I think that this subject lets us know what we need to be looking for. We need to be looking for that same Jesus. Uh, that same Jesus is coming back again. Uh, uh, that same way that he left this earth. When I look at this subject, I think of a number of things that uh, ought to uh, arouse our attention. I think that we ought to, first of all, uh, uh, look at this, uh, this passage to understand uh, that the Lord is in control, that the Lord uh, has all power. And, you know, there's nobody I've ever heard of uh, that left this earth and got on a cloud, first 747, by the way. <laughs> uh, Jesus aborted a cloud and got on up out of this earth and uh, uh, went up to heaven and boarded that cloud, and he's been there on the right hand of God ever since. But you see, the Lord is coming back again, church, and we got to make sure that we're ready. You see, folk can talk about uh, 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 when you ask them, uh, do you believe that you said, well, I think, uh, I feel, uh, I, I, I don't know, but I, I, I sort of think I'm, I'm ready. I, I think I'm, you ought to know you're saved, and you better be ready because the Lord is coming back, whether you're ready or not. Uh, the ascension uh, of Christ, uh, 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 going up into heaven, he boarded a cloud. You know, at the end of his earthly ministry, we find uh, some things that the passage uh, points out to us here. And I think that there is a uh, 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 attention getter that we ought to see. Uh, let us look at verse number 2 of Acts chapter 1. Uh, the Bible says, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, uh, had given commandments unto the apostles, whom he had chosen. You know, the Lord knows those who are his. John chapter 10, the Bible says, uh, uh, he is the good shepherd. He's not just a shepherd, but he's the good shepherd. And the Bible says that his sheep know his voice, and they are known of him. So we have to make sure that we're listening to the right voice. So when this same Jesus comes back, we won't be shocked. We won't be like a lot of folk thinking that they're ready and, and on their deathbed crying to the Lord, asking, Lord, please forgive me. Too late then. I have a brother that passed away in the year of 2001, and all the years of his life that he lived up to the age of 60, uh, I used to always talk to him about the church, and he said, oh, boy, I don't have time for that stuff. Joseph, you, 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 all, all, you just like all the rest of the preachers, all y'all want is my money. I told him, I said, no, no, sir, you got it wrong. I don't want your money. We're after your soul. The Lord wants your soul. And I think one of the brothers put it best the other day and said, uh, when the Lord gets your soul and your mind and your heart and your body, uh, then the Lord going to get the pocketbook. That's going to come if you're converted to the Lord. But now, if you're not converted, then that's a whole different story. So we find here in the book of Acts, this uh, first chapter, and uh, this passage lets us know that the Lord was leaving the disciples. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a sad thing to uh, see someone depart uh, that you uh, have been around for a long time, and many of us can identify with that. When our loved ones leave, we, we know we're not going to see them again until the after while, if they prepared themselves uh, for such. But you see, Jesus had been uh, with uh, his disciples here and with the apostles for uh, some three years in his uh, public ministry. And, and now uh, uh, this was uh, ten days, of course, before uh, Pentecost, and the Lord had to go ahead and leave, put it in the hands of the apostles to preach and teach and tell those uh, who will remain, that they need to be ready because he was coming back again. You know, there's a good thing, and that's a precious thing to know that the Lord is coming back again. We have something to look forward to. All the mundane activities that we consider 
ourselves going through. I tell folk on a regular basis, every time we assemble on the Lord's Day, it's not just some rhetoric and some mundane activity that we're going through just because we don't have anything better to do. But we're looking forward to the day when the Lord is going to return. We got to be ready. We got to be ready, church. Look at the passage once again. Uh, the Bible says here in Acts 1 and verse 9, while uh, 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 he was speaking uh, to uh, the apostles here, uh, there's something very interesting that I see uh, in uh, verse number 9. Let's look at it uh, again. Uh, the Bible says, and when he had spoken, you see, you're going to have to learn to listen to the Lord. That's the problem in the church today. We got folk listening to too many other voices. Back in John chapter 10, as we were saying earlier, uh, uh, the Lord's sheep listen to the voice of Christ. His sheep won't go and follow some voice that they don't identify. So we have to be very careful, church. We have to make sure uh, that we're listening to the voice of the Lord, his word, and those who preach and teach his word soundly. I'm not talking about folk who get up and preach a bunch of nursery rhymes and a bunch of stuff that sounds good, so good till it has uh, sugar and honey dripping off of it, and then you ask them after the service, what did they preach about? Child, I don't know, but it sure sounded good to me. Well, uh, you better follow that rascal and make sure he's preaching the word of God. But the Bible says here in verse number 9 of Acts 1, and when he had spoken these things, what things? Well, we'll talk about it in a little bit. While they beheld uh, uh, him. Uh, the Bible says he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. You know, it's a good thing to keep your eyes on the right thing. It's a good thing to keep your eyes on the Lord. Because you see, if you don't keep your eyes on the Lord, you'll start looking around and the devil will give you plenty to see. The devil will show you things that you don't need to be seen. That's why many fall by the wayside, fall from the Lord's church after becoming a Christian as new converts. I, I, I try to encourage uh, our new converts here at North Glen Heights and everywhere else I've been. You make sure that you're faithful. Don't look around at other church members. You make sure you're faithful. And if you're faithful, then that's what you're supposed to do. Because, you see, your salvation is not going to depend upon what I do or don't do. My salvation is not going to depend upon what you do or don't do. But I've got to give an account for myself. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10, we all are going to stand before the judgment seat of God. And we're going to have to give an account of the things that we've done in this body, whether they be good or whether they be bad. So we've got to stand before God. While uh, Jesus was speaking these words to them. You know, uh, the Bible says in Matthew 13 and verse 8, He that hath an ear, let him hear. you got to listen to the voice of God. Luke chapter 24 and verse number 51 said something about uh, these words that Christ spoke on one occasion. And it was yet in their ears. You see, we have to let the word still yet be ringing in our ears right. that the Lord is coming back. Oh, he's coming back. You see, uh, uh, the gospel uh, uh, advocate commentary uh, put it this way. He uh, said, and while uh, uh, their eyes were still gazing on him, uh, the, the Bible says that their eyes were fixed on the Lord. You see, when you're trying to do the will of the Lord, you better fix your eyes on the will of the Lord and get away from all this crazy stuff that these brethren are bringing up uh, around the brotherhood. You see, you need to keep your eyes on the message and the messenger that's teaching sound doctrine and not just stuff that folk want to hear. You see, this ascension uh, of Christ that took place, when we look at verses 6 to 11, we don't have time to go back and read all of it, uh, but it lets us know that Jesus uh, was raised uh, from this earth. Uh, in an invisible manner. As he went up, the Bible says that he went up further and further out of their sight into a cloud until they couldn't see him no more. You know, that reminds me 
uh, growing up as a little boy, my daddy used to always say, just because you don't see me around watching you, don't think that I don't know what's going on. Right. You know, and that's the way the Lord is. Just because we don't see him around, the Lord is still watching. Not only is he looking, he's booking. He's writing it down. Revelation 20 and verse 12. Oh, it's, it's going to be there. It's going to meet us, and it's being written. So the Lord has his eyes on us. But what's more importantly, we need to have our eyes on the Lord. Uh, the Bible says that as they uh, uh, looked at him, as he was uh, aborting the cloud and going up out of their sight uh, in that invisible manner, uh, they, he continued to rise higher and higher, and they continued just falling and looking and looking and looking more to try to see Jesus till they couldn't see him no more. But you see, that doesn't matter. That's not the real story. The Lord wanted them to go back and do what he told them to do. You know, a lot of times we won't, some folk in the church won't do anything until they see somebody. Well, I don't see nobody else doing it, so I, you better get busy doing the will of the Lord. Because the Lord is watching you just like he's watching me. There's a song we sing in our songbook. There's an all-seeing eye watching you. So this cloud, this cloud that received uh, Jesus up. Uh, the Bible says it was a cloud, number one, that received him. Secondly, uh, the cloud surrounded him. Thirdly, the cloud enclosed him. It was all around him. And then fourthly, uh, it lets us know that he was removed out of their sight. You see, there, there are some things that we got to remember, church, that, that we need to get back to basics. We receive the Lord and his word. We got to keep surrounding ourselves with those who are sound in the word of God and forget not the foundation, forget not the sound doctrine, forget not the sound words, forget not uh, the doctrine uh, that we need to hold fast. You see, the Bible teaches us uh, uh, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, prove all things, Amen. hold fast. Did you hear what I say? I said hold fast to that which is good. So we need to hold to the word of God. We have received it. We need to keep surrounding ourselves around and then enclose ourselves in the right fellowship with brethren and members who are faithful. You see, uh, a lot of these rascals that's out here and right in the Metroplex a few blocks away, right down the highway, I don't have a problem calling names. Yeah, because they're going to call our names and they're watching, I'm sure, right now while we're on the Internet, and that's all right. And if you disagree with it, come talk to us so we can get some dialogue open and get back to where we need to be and enclose ourselves with the right folk and fellowship. And then uh, when Jesus was removed from their sight, they didn't remove themselves from what the Lord told them to do. But you see, we are living uh, 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 in a society. We're living in a spiritual uh, 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 surrounding now. Uh, that many have removed themselves. Go with me to Galatians uh, chapter 1. You know where I'm going. You, we've used the passage over and over already, but we're going to use it some more. Cause like I told you, I don't have anything new. There's nothing new under the sun that ain't already been done, and I'm going to do it again. Galatians chapter 1, verse number 6, if someone would read that. Uh, I marvel. Uh -huh. That you are so soon removed. Listen to Paul. He's talking to the church at Galatia. You see, the church at Galatia was, was, was a, a congregation that had been uh, faithful to the Lord, but just like family folk, just like some folk uh, in the church will try to pull you back out of the Lord and away from the Lord. These uh, Galatian, Galatians, Galatians uh, uh, Christians were trying to be pulled back into Judaism by the Judaizers. So Paul was saying something here. He said in verse number 6, read it again. I marvel uh -huh. that ye are so soon removed. So soon removed. From uh -huh. him that called you into the grace of Christ. Listen now. The Lord, uh, uh, Paul was saying to them, the Lord has called you into the grace of Christ. Unto another gospel. Uh -huh. you, you see, there's some folk that's going to call you and cause you to leave the Lord because they got some stuff that sounds good. 
Oh, oh, it feels good over here. Oh, we're getting down over here. Oh, we're having a Holy Ghost party over here. Well, let me tell you something. If you're having all that good of a time and ain't no gospel being preached, then you might well go to the nightclub because the same thing you're doing, you can do that. I tell folk, if you want to do that in the Lost Church, you need to get on outside the door, go down the street, and go to whatever club you've been hanging out at, because most of them are there on Saturday night anyhow. Yeah, yeah, they, they've been there. But Paul said, I marvel that you're so soon removed. From him that called you. That called you. Into listen. the grace of Christ uh -huh. unto another gospel. Listen, there, there are some folk who want to teach and, and, and already have been teaching and going to keep teaching until either God stops them or until they uh, repent, until they decide they're going to straighten up. They're going to keep on doing it, and, and they're going to preach another gospel. Go ahead. Which is not another. You see, Paul was saying that they ain't but one. They ain't but one gospel. So all this stuff that folk are preaching and telling folk, uh, uh, go to the church of your choice, uh, 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 do do what you feel, you know, uh, 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 go and get your blessing. Well, before you go looking for a blessing, you need to look around. If you're moving around, you've gotten your blessing already. Amen. So we need to be thankful. But Paul says uh, that there's not a, another gospel. But, but listen there'll be to the some that trouble you. There's going to be some folk that's going to trouble you. In other words, Paul said, there's going to be some folk going to teach you some stuff you can't find in the Word of God. You see, they call us the ones troubling folk. No, we're not troubling. We're helping folk, trying to get folk back on track to where they need to be. Go ahead and read. And would pervert uh -huh. the gospel of Christ. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Go With ahead. Or we uh -huh. or an angel from heaven. Listen to him. Preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Uh -huh. Let him be accursed. You see, there is something about when you have the word of God, and you're holding on to the word of God, you better keep holding on to it. Because, you see, there are going to be some folk who are going to trouble you. There are going to be some folk who are going to pervert. That's why T.D. Jake's parking lot is full on Sunday mornings. Every, every time I come this direction, uh, uh, every Lord's Day or Wednesday or whenever we're here, I pass right by there. Parking lot's full all on the other side of the street. they got to have police directing traffic and going on. Got lights uh, flashing and going on. Folk love that kind of stuff because the devil done got in their heart. The devil done helped them to make up their mind. Man, well, all these folk over here, are, uh, we can't, we, he, he got to be right. Look at all the people. Well, you see, uh, Jesus said there's only going to be a few. And I know my time, I, I knew, I knew when I turned to page two of my notes I was in trouble. But you see, we got to be careful, church. We got to make sure uh, that we're waiting on the Lord and be ready for the Lord when he comes back. Amen. You see, uh, when Jesus uh, uh, went up uh, 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 to Mount Olivet just before his ascension, uh, he had to get these disciples, get these apostles ready and let them know that after he left, uh, uh, there was going to have to be some work to be done. And after he told them uh, what they were uh, needing to get ready to do 10 days later, uh, there on the day of Pentecost, uh, he, he said, I've got to leave. And I'm sure, I don't know, uh, 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 this is a fact, but when the apostles saw him uh, leaving that site, I could imagine tears were falling from their eyes. You know, when you see a loved one that you are not going to see anymore, you shed tears. Amen. But you see, there ought to be tears of joy because if they left in the right condition, you know you're going to see them again. You see, so when the apostles, uh, verse number 10 of Acts chapter 1, I've got a heavy, uh, it says, while they were looking steadfastly, gazed uh, intently. In, in other words, when that word uh, looking steadfastly, that means that they gazed up intently uh, as if to see Jesus again. But Jesus just kept disappearing, disappearing, disappearing out of their sight. But they kept looking. And you know that's the way we've got to be, spiritually speaking. We've got to keep waiting intently and intensely on the Lord and his return. Recall he's coming back again. You see, and, and then the Bible says that there were two angels uh, standing by two men in white apparel. Uh, these angelic uh, beings uh, had taken uh, a stand by the apostles. 
and the apostles did not see the angels uh, at that time, but uh, they, they, they understand that, uh, and we know that angels, these two angels had a human form, and they were uh, in white clothing. You see, uh, and even uh, other angelic uh, beings, the Bible tells us, uh, the, angel, uh, the angels at Joseph's new tomb uh, were there where Jesus was laid, were described in the same way. Mark 16, verse number 5. Luke 24, verse number 4. John 20 and verse 12. God does all things well. Whenever we keep our eyes on the Lord, we're going to be all right. But when we take our eyes off the Lord, that's when the trouble comes. Verse number 11 lets us know. It gives us a, a visionary peak or it gives us a look on the inside. Uh, uh, a matter of fact, uh, uh, when, when this passage talks about uh, how that the Lord uh, disappeared uh, out of their sight, uh, these angels uh, uh, were giving uh, them instruction, and they were saying to them, uh, here, let's read it again in verse uh, number 11. Uh, these angels said, uh, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? That same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Church, we've got to get ready Amen. for the coming of the Lord. The coming of the Lord is not as far. My daddy used to always say, time is not as long as it once has been. Every second that ticks off the clock, the Lord is getting ready to come. Every minute off the clock. The Lord is getting ready. Every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year, the Lord is getting closer and closer to his return. Just don't take my words and just don't listen to only uh, what uh, Luke had recorded uh, there in Acts chapter 1. But go with me uh, quickly uh, to uh, 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 1. And we've read this over and over again, but I'm going to have it read again. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. If someone has it, go ahead and read. Yes, sir. In verse number 7, 8, and 9. 2 Thessalonians chapter so 1. So that uh -huh. you were examples all right, uh, to all that believe in Macedonia. 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. Thessalonians. And to you who are troubled, uh -huh. rest with us. Yes. When the Lord Jesus uh -huh. shall be revealed from heaven. Yes, sir. With his mighty angels mm -hmm. in flame and fire. Yes. Taking vengeance on them mm -hmm. that know not God. Uh -huh. And obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Who shall be punished mm -hmm. with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. Yes. And from the glory and his power. All right. You see, now that's what's going to take place. But look at verse number 10 as we hurry to a close. Go ahead. And when he shall come mm -hmm. to be glorified in his saints. Yes, sir. And to be admired of them mm -hmm. that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. You see, you see, we're going to have to believe it as it was believed in that day. All we right. better keep believing it today. Amen. That the Lord is coming back again. And he's going to take vengeance on them that don't know God. And that even go for members of the church. Amen. Just call your names on the church roll All and right. you fall away from the church and you're not faithful. You can bust hell wide open. Just like those who have not obeyed the God. I know that's kind of strong for some folks, but I just tell it like it is, and I deal with it later. Uh, so, so we have to understand that the Lord is going to take vengeance on us if we don't act right. And that's going out to all of our brethren who are members of the Church of Christ who are preaching something contrary to the gospel of Christ today. You're going to bust hell wide open if you don't do what's right. And if you don't, if that ain't good enough for you, as I close, let's turn over to 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 9, 10, 11, and 12. And I'm going to take my seat because I know my time is getting real short. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 9, 10. You see, the Lord ain't playing. The Lord ain't shucking and jiving like some of our brethren and the brotherhood. Child, uh, 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 they need to just fall and do what I say. Uh, do as I do, don't do, uh, do, do as I say, but don't do as I do. Because a lot of them ain't doing anything. Go to Matthew chapter 23 and write it down. We don't have time to go there. But uh, the scribes and Pharisees were good folk at telling folk to do stuff, binding heavy burdens on other folk, and they wasn't going to lift a finger themselves 
to do it. Yeah, yeah. They told them, uh, uh, you go do this. But they wanted to be noticed in the marketplaces and be called rabbi and, and be recognized everywhere they went. Uh, put on their broad robes uh, uh, with the broad phylacteries and had scriptures written all on the borders of the garments, strutting around, want to be seen of men. God ain't concerned about how we look in front of the folk. God is concerned about where our mind is according to his word. But so much for that. Second uh, Peter chapter 3, verse number 9. The Lord is not slack uh -huh. concerning his promise. Listen now. As some men count slackness, uh -huh. but is long suffering us word. Yes, sir. Not willing that any should perish. Stop right there for just a second. I've got to park and put my uh, uh, emergency flashes on for a second. Uh, the, 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 the apostle Peter here is letting us know that the Lord is not slack. In other words, God ain't forgot. Amen. God ain't going to forget. God never forgets. Uh, 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 the Bible says that the eye of the Lord is in every place. Yes, sir, two minutes and I can do it. I, I'll be done in less than two. But you see, we've got to understand. We've got to understand that the Lord is not slack concerning what he promised. Well, the problem is it's with us. We're the one who are slackers and sluggard and slothful and lazy and trifling, as my daddy used to say. I, I, I've been intending to look that word up, but I, I guess it just means lazy. You know, uh, he, he said, boy, don't be trifling and no count and no earthly good. And I say, yes, sir. So I've been working hard ever since I come into the Lord Church. I don't want to be trifling. I don't want to be sorry and no count and no good to the Lord and to his work. So the Bible says the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. As Go ahead. some men count slackness, uh -huh. but as long suffering us word, uh -huh. not willing that any should perish. You see, the Lord don't want us to perish, but we got to do something about it. We got to get up off the stool or do nothing and get up and do something so the Lord won't condemn us. Amen. Go ahead and read. But that all should come to uh -huh. repentance. You see, you got to repent of that stuff. And stop that foolishness and him hawing and he hawing around, as my daddy used to say. And you need to come to re get it right with the Lord. Go ahead and read. But the day of the Lord uh -huh. will come as a thief in the night. Oh, Lord. Uh -huh. In which the heavens shall pass away with uh -huh. a great noise. Yes, sir. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Uh -huh. The earth also and the works there that are therein shall be burned up. You know, stop right there. Peter is saying that you better get yourself ready. Because Lord's coming back, and it's going to be serious business. It ain't going to be no playing time and no, none of this me time, and I got to get myself together. But the Lord is coming back, and he's going to burn this earth up. These folks talking about the Lord, gonna, uh, Jehovah Witness and others talking about going to come back and set up a kingdom. How are you going to set something up when it's burned up? Listen, listen now. He's going he's to burn it up with fervent heat. Yeah, go ahead and read. Seeing then, seeing then, that all these things shall be dissolved. In other words, ain't gonna be nothing left. Go ahead. What man of persons we uh, ought, ought ye to be uh -huh. in all holy conversation and godliness? Lord have mercy. But look at verse number twelve. This is what I like. Looking for, yes, sir, and hastening unto the coming of the day of God. Yeah, yeah. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, mm -hmm. and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. All right, verse number 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. You know, Peter is letting us know that uh, there's a good side and then there's a bad side. He gave us the bad side, and now he's given us the good side. One more verse, and my time is up. Look at verse number 14 here. Wherefore, beloved, uh, uh huh. Seeing that ye look for such things, uh -huh. be diligent yes, sir. that ye may be found of him in peace yes, sir. without spot and blameless. Amen. You know, I trust and pray that all of us, when we press a dying pillar and the Lord have called us uh, from this walk of life, and uh, we shall never walk uh, here on this earth no more, and our, our footprints have been blown out by the sands of time. I hope that we understand that this same Jesus is coming back again in the manner that he left. God bless you.
that the Lord is going to come back. Amen. All of these brothers have done a wonderful job this morning. Every one of God's servants has helped us and earned his wisdom for today. Okay? Uh, let us also 